hi welcome back to my channel well in this video we'll try to learn some of the important uh, test of significance like t z uh, f test and chi square test which are very much used while testing a particular hypothesis so let us begin uh, a test of significance often referred to as a statistical hypothesis test is a statistical method used to determine whether there's an enough evidence in a sample of data to infer or conclude a particular hypothesis about a population parameter since a statistical hypothesis is always a statement about a population or a pro probability distribution which we want to verify on the basis of information which is collected from uh, the sample uh, so this test of significance actually authenticates whether there's an existence of significant or non-significant difference or whether the difference between the objects of comparison is real or it is by chance so the process typically involves comparing observed data to what would be the expected under null hypothesis so the common statistical test or test of significance uh, include t test z test f test chi square uh, test and many more other tests the choice of the test depends on the factors such as the nature of the data obviously the size of the data the research design you are dealing with uh, or in what context you are uh, doing your research and a specific hypothesis that has to be investigated so uh, as far as the test of significance is concerned or the basic test of statistics or test of significance are concerned in statistical uh, uh, hypothesis testing or hypothesis testing uh, we can say we used to compare things either in terms of means or in terms of variances uh, so either we are comparing things in terms of means or in terms of variances when we are uh, interested to compare things uh, maximum two or maximum two samples in terms of average or in terms of means uh, we have two categories uh, or tests of significance which are involved one is t and another one is z and one other another important uh, criteria is that whether this population standard deviation is known or unknown or uh, what is the size of the sample whether it is greater than or less than 30 30 is a standard sample size which categorize whether you are using a large sample or a small sample small sample tests are those tests uh, in which the sample size is less than 30 and if it is greater than 30 they are considered to be large uh, samples usually this t test is used whenever the sample size is less than 30 and z is this is uh, is similar to like this but the difference is not based on sample size because we can use t test for a large number of sample size also the question is all about this uh, standard deviation if it is known we can use z if it is unknown we have to use t test now we have different forms of t test one sample two sample t shall be equal and unequal variances and uh, we have peer t test also uh, we are having a correlated variables so when we are comparing things in terms of variances we have a very wonderful test which plays a very important role in analysis of variances also that is known as variance ratio test or f test so uh, let us start with the one sample t test uh, so one sample t test is usually the basic or the foundation of testing of hypothesis it is usually used whenever the population standard deviation is unknown and if we see about the basic formula of this t test it is nothing it is uh, the deviation of sample mean from its population mean divided by the standard error s upon under root n x bar is the sample mean this is the hypothetical mean or a population mean upon sample standard deviation uh, whole divided by under root of n n is the sample size and it follows a t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom and uh, the first thing is that we have to compute the sample mean then we have to compute this uh, variance or standard deviation this is very easy to do and it is an unbiased estimate of this uh, population variance for example a vegetable expert released a new variety of vegetable and is expected to give a yield of 14.5 uh, quintals so the hypothetical or the population mean which a particular expert is claiming is 14.5 quintals per hectare this variety uh, was tested on 12 randomly selected farmers which are here uh, now the null hypothesis is uh, do the results confirm to the expectation it is very simple to do first we have to calculate the mean by means of this formula 
calculate uh, the standard deviation sample standard deviation by means of this once you have got both these values substitute these uh, values into this formula you can get the value of test statistics now once you compute the value of this it has to be tallied with its critical value the rule is if it is greater than the tabulated value then we have to reject the hypothesis that means the results do not confirm the expectation if it is less than results do confirm the expectation that means we have to accept the hypothesis now two sample t tests the obviously the word itself suggests that we have to compare two samples in terms of average uh, we have two different categories and two sample t tests one is students t test another one is wells t test uh, in students t test the assumption is it assumes equal variances and uh, this wells t test is same but it does not assume equal variances it is more robust when variances of two groups are unequal the basic traditional formula for two sample t test with equal variances is the mod of x bar minus mu y bar this is the first sample average of second sample and obviously you will be expecting equal or unequal sample size and it follows n1 plus n2 minus 2 degrees of freedom and similar in this way we can compute it is uh, similarly we can compute the average of these two by means of this first sample average of some or we can get the pooled variance since uh, we are assuming the unequal value and if we are assuming that there is an unequal variance then we have to separately calculate their uh, variances or standard deviation for example uh, two varieties of tomato plants uh, yielded uh, uh, tomatoes uh, which is not yielded tube are shown in the figure uh, in this table uh, so the question here is do the average yield of tomato uh, significantly different in these two uh, varieties whether this variety is significantly different from this variety in terms of the variable of interest that is yield uh, so this is a clear example of this sim two sample t test since t test is used whenever we are comparing things in terms of means uh, at the most two uh, since in case of uh, peer t test we have another type of t test that is known as peer test in case of previous test uh, we used to compare things uh, in terms of two samples or in terms of average in peer t test and two sample t test we can say both are used to compare means but they are applicable in different situations and involve different types of data so the situation is uh, it is used when the data involves pairs of related observations or repeated measures on the same subject. So this is very important. But in case of traditional two sample t test, we don't have uh, the measurements on the same subjects. Both the subjects are independent or both the groups are independent in case of traditional two sample t test. Often applied in before and after studies or whenever there are paired or matched observation or we can say the correlated observation. The assumption in this case is that the difference between the peers follow normal distribution or the sample size is large enough, uh, large enough for the central limit theorem to apply. This is a very important uh, theorem which is used in statistics and it usually assumes whenever there is an increase in sample size or we can say as the sample size uh, increase or tends to infinity. A distribution a particular distribution whatever the circumstance you are using and it has a certain kind of a distribution it tends to normality or it follows a normal distribution. the difference differences are independent of each other uh, so this is the traditional formula for prt test that is uh, the mode of the deviation between before and after for example if we are doing an animal study for example we are measuring uh, the blood pressure of a particular animal then we are giving a drug or injection to that particular animal then after injecting or after giving a drug to that uh, animal we are again measuring the blood pressure that means the subject is same only we are doing the measurements before and after so such kind of studies where this kind of things are involved or this kind of situations are involved we can apply this PRT test uh, for example the we have a, a example here the average number of seeds uh, sets per pod in pea plant were determined from the top flowers and bottom flowers of 10 flower here if we take uh, the example of the first uh, plant uh, six um, uh, seeds per set were found in case of top and in case of bottom so the plant is same the subject is same only the readings are taken at two different uh, pauses or we can say before and after test whether there is a significant difference between top and so if we have this kind of data set and you are involved to compare the two things before and after studies uh, in terms of average you can apply t test uh, the only difference between t and z test is that uh, we have one sample z test we have two sample t z test the only difference is that the population standard deviation is known 
uh, we can apply Z and if the population standard deviation is unknown we can apply T and uh, the important thing about T test is that we have three different types of T test one is one sample T test this was the first one this is one sample T test then we have two sample T test and peer T test in case of two sample uh, T test we have two different types of T test that is uh, students T test and Wells T test this involves equal variances this involves unequal variances but the important thing about T test is that uh, we are comparing one or maximum two samples in terms of average so two means can be compared by means of uh, peer T test T peer T test or um, two sample T test or we can say general in T test maximum samples which have to be compared in terms of means are only two uh, not more than two average can be compared by means of t-test so uh, things are not always uh, be uh, compared or objects of comparisons are not always compared in terms of means they have to be compared in terms of variances also so whenever we are comparing uh, objects or uh, samples in terms of variances if only two variances are involved then we have to authenticate uh, the significance or amount of variation whether the uh, variation among the samples is significant or not whether the difference is real or by chance we have to apply f test so the performance of sample is not only assessed by their means but also by their variability in testing the equality of variances greater variance is always placed in the numerator and uh, numerator and the smaller in denominator and the assumptions are the population from which the samples are drawn must be normal and two samples drawn must be independent so the traditional formula is nothing it is the ratio of two variance s1 square divided by s2 square that is why it is known as variance ratio test for example the height in meters of a high density plant apple plant with two types of management practice in the field is that test whether the variances of two management practices are homogeneous so the null hypothesis is the variances of two management uh, practices are homogeneous or vice versa. So we have to see whether there is an existence of homogeneity of variances among these two management practices in context to this uh, height which is involved in an orchard of high density apple. Uh, so that is why it is known as variance ratio test because here we are having the variances in the ratio form. Uh, for first sample or first management practice or second management practices so here the we can conclude that if we are if we are interested to compare things or uh, compare uh, samples in terms of means we have t test and if we are interested to compare things in terms of variance we are f test but we have to remember one thing maximum two means in case of two samples in case of t test and maximum number of variances which can be compared uh, by means of f tests are only two they are not more than two if we are comparing the homogeneity of two means we have to apply t or z if we are interested to test the homogeneity of two variances we can apply f test now if we have more than uh, two means or more than uh, two variances then we cannot apply t or we cannot apply this we have uh, another test for that there is a very important uh, test of significance that is known as chi square test and this is usually used uh, when we are dealing with a qualitative or categorical or enumer enumerative type of a data set where we are uh, dealing uh, with a data type uh, which involves categorical or qualitative type of variables or we can say uh, attributes uh, for that we have two different types or, or different versions of chi square test one is used for goodness of fit and another one is used for to test the independence of different qualitative or categorical attributes and this goodness of fit is usually used to test whether there is a uh, uh, significant difference between the observed and expected frequencies and this one is used to test uh, whether there is an existence of association or independence between uh, different categorical or qualitative variables and this is the basic formula that is chi square it is not x square it is the greek letter chi is equal to summation of observed minus expected whole square whole divided by the expected frequencies which are involved so the important condition is that the sample observation should be independent constraints if any they should be linear the total frequency should be greater than 50 and no theoretical cell frequency should be less than 5 and we have if we have this kind of a situation then we have to apply certain kind of corrections like Yates correction in this 
for example uh, we have an example of uh, here the 60 goats they were given five different diets and uh, these uh, 60 goats they had a free access to all these uh, five diets nine goats out of 60 preferred this diet 13 out of 60 preferred this uh, 14 out of uh, 60 preferred C and 11 out of D preferred this and the finally 13 out of 60 uh, uh, um, uh, preferred this type of diet. So the null hypothesis is uh, do all these five diets are equally preferred uh, or alternative is that there is no equal preference among these five diets. So uh, what we have to do first uh, these are the observed frequencies. Now, how we are going to get the expected frequencies? Uh, since uh, the total number of goats is 60, uh, so we had 5 diets. Uh, so, 60 divided by 5 is nothing is 12. So, it will remain constant because they had a free FSS uh, for all these. The goats had a free SS to all 5 different. So, this expected value will remain constant here. Then uh, what we have to do in order to uh, use the same formula summation observed minus expected square whole divided by expected. Uh, what we have to do simply this observed minus expected is minus 3 in this case. Then we have to get the square of the 3 multiplied 3 is 9. 1 multiplied 1 is 2. 2 multiplied 2 is 4. And again it will remain 1 and it will remain there. Then what we have to do this 9 is has to be uh, divided by this 12. Is 0 0.75 1 divided by 12 is this and 4 divided by 12 is 0 0.3 and finally what we have to get get the total of these sum of this and this will be our final calculated chi square and the thumb rule is if the calculated value of a particular test of significance is less than its tabulated value which is here in this case because the tabulated value here or a critical value is 9.4 which is much higher tabulated value is higher or we can say the calculated value is less than tabulated value so in this case we have to accept this hypothesis that means all these five different diets are equally preferred by these 60 goats and four degrees of freedom here is because we have five diets that's five minus one is four so another situation here is that to test uh, we have two different attributes one is yielding capacity or yielding capacity and sharing capacity we had 350 uh, trees which are high yielding but shaded and 205 trees which are uh, high yielding but unshaded same is the case with the different we have shaded with low yielding and 195 low yielding but unshaded so how we are going to see or test or compute the chi square for that this is very simple this is our observed frequency the grand total is 100 the direct formula is get the grand total of this or uh, use the form this is suppose this is a this is b this is c and d get the multiple of 350 with 95 minus 205 multiplied by 250 and square this whole term multiply it with the grand total then get this row total first multiply it with the second row total then multiply it with the first column total and second total by means of this formula you can get this value a 4.84 or you have to get uh, the expected frequency of each and every cell by means of this this is very simple to do that means since you have got the row total for this uh, first row second row column total for first column and second column the basic formula for this is very simple uh, that means if you are interested to calculate expected frequency of a particular uh, cell for that you simply uh, will multiply its row total say for example this belongs to the first row its row total with its uh, respective column total that means row total first multiply by column total first whole divided by grand total which is thousand in this case and in order to this the row total will remain same since it belongs to the first row but the column will total will get changed because it is belong to second column so here in this case row 1 multiplied by column 1 whole divided by grand total here it will be row 1 multiplied by column second whole divided by grand total so in this similar way you can get the expected frequency of this and this like in this way and simply what we have to do we have to simply sum and in this case again the calculated value here the calculated value is greater than this uh, tabulated value so these two attributes uh, they have a significant association that means this is there's an existence of dependence between yielding capacity and sharing capacity so this was all about the testing of uh, test of significance 
uh, we started with t-test then uh, f-test then guy score test t-test is used when we are uh, comparing or when we are testing the homogeneity of means maximum two and when we are uh, testing the homogeneity of variances maximum two then we have to apply f-test and when we are uh, when we are dealing with a situation where we have to test association or independence between categorical or qualitative variables then we have to apply chi-square test uh, thank you hope you will like this video if you have any questions or comments you can post them in comment section the next video which we will make will be based on correlation and regression so we'll see you in the next video thank you very much